Well, welcome back. I'm here with my FTM 200, and I've been thinking about ways to deal with one of the problems that's been that plagues those of us that use the FTM mobile radio line from Yesu. Um, that's become much more apparent here in the recent past because the FTM 500 has arrived, and we've all been asking the question, or many of us have, will it have memory banks? And it, it as it turns out, it does not. So I've come up with some thoughts on how to deal with that situation, which I want to share with you. Uh, one of the things that you notice when you program in a memory, and let's go ahead and take a look at one here right now. So we're going to hold down the V slash M button, and that brings us to our memories list. And if we scroll up, and we go into the edit there, we can look down one, two, three, four lines to where it says scan. And if I go down there and I toggle the button to no or yes, let's go back out of here, and I initiate a scan, memory that I turn off will no longer be in that scan. So you could put four or five memories or more in there and not have that interfere with your local memories that you're listening to. Uh, yes, that does mean you have a longer list, but let's look at a couple of ways we can go about doing that, because if you do it all on the front of the radio, that could take a while. So one thing we could do is hook it up to the computer. So we're going to be looking at this ADMS-15 software that Yesu provides. You will need to use the SCU-58 cable, and you'll need to download the prolific driver and the software that we're seeing in the background right here from the FTM 200 page. Um, each of the radios has its own page with a similar layout here where you will come to get the software that you need to do this. Uh, the, the interface is very simple um, in a kind of archaic way. It's not very sophisticated, but it does work pretty well. So what we're going to do first is go to communication, get data from the FTM 200, and it gives you a nice little description here of what you need to do. Um, and it's a little small here, but what it tells us is we're going to go to the function menu, hold that down till we get into the main options, the main list of options, use item number 116. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I've got it right there already. So we're going to click OK and then on the radio. OK. And it's searching. And then we see that it is retrieving the data from the radio. And we're going to be presented with a nice list here in just a moment. OK, it's complete. And there's all the memories that I have programmed in right now. Um, the nice thing is, um, were we to do it in this interface, um, go to an open space, we could start typing in the main receive frequency. Um, the transmit will autofill uh, plus or minus unless you change that. Um, and then you can put some notes in there without having to do the uh, wheel, the select wheel on the radio it is always a long process. Um, you'll notice that I've got some spaces in here. You can select a line and use the um, the buttons up above here to move it around if you want to. So it's a nice way. There's some several tricks to um, organize your memories that way, which I find very useful. But the real trick here is a little bit hidden over on the side here. And notice on the on this line right here, it says scan. So we can turn them to yes or no very quickly without a lot of scrolling through and looking. Now I've already done something here. On the lower part here, I have some out-of-state repeaters programmed in. I've done that just for the sake of this example right here, but then I switch them all to no. But should I go over there, I could quickly switch them to yes and switch all these other ones to no. So that'd be one way to do it. And... Well, it's not perfect, 
it does prevent you from hearing a lot of noise on a uh, or a situation where you're trying to transmit to a repeater you're hearing uh, activity on only to realize the the PL or CTCSS tone is wrong because it's the out of state frequency that you're listening to and you didn't notice that. So that would not be fun and not work very well. So let's say we had finished programming everything we wanted to with this software. Then the next step would be to go to communications and send data. And again, we're giving this nice uh, description of what to do. We push the F menu which we're already in that space here, having just sent the data over. But we're gonna go down to item 117, and we're gonna push it first on the radio. I've noticed that when you initiate the uh, right to radio, you want to have the radio listen first before clicking the final button on the software on your computer. And it's the, the exact opposite when you're re retrieving. Um, I've just seen it over and over as I've been playing with this that if you do it in the other order than I just mentioned, uh, it times out and you have to start the scan process to talk to each other. So as this finishes, what we're going to also see is the radio reboots itself once it has received your new programming. So we'll see that happen here in just a moment. It says it's completed, we'll close, and there goes the radio as it reboots, having just completed a read function of all the um, information that we've set up here on the software on the computer. Um, there's no need to pull out a card from the micro SD slot or anything. You just connect it and turn on the software, and you can pull things in and push them back out just as simple as that. Now let's look over here at the radio and we're going to look through the memories here. There's some activity happening there. We're seeing on the very top line memory all. That means I've not restricted my search to any band other the 70 or centimeter or the two meter. And then the number next to that M dash all is the memory uh, number, what slot it's in, I should say. And you can see over the far right whether I have a transmit tone associated with that. And let's keep going here for a little bit. We're going to look for what, oh, there it is right there. So this N0BVE Chaska next to the uh, red box with a line through it, there's an X there. And what that means is that uh, memory is not on the scan list. So you can, you get a nice visual indicator on screen telling you whether that particular memory is a part of your scan. Let's see here. I think it's this one right here. Let's go to edit. And there it is. You can see it is no when we go into it. So we, we confirmed that that tells us that that, that little um, icon tells us that this is not on scan. So there you go. Maybe not a perfect solution. Hopefully that's been of some value or thought you know, opens up your thinking a little bit on ways we can handle this situation. Maybe you have a, new, a different idea um, that will help us as we deal with the fact there's no memory banks available in these radios. And hopefully you got some value out of this and you'll come back for a future video. Talk to you later.